Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. Cubic equations are fun and there's a cubic formula if you want to use it. That's quite complicated. So we have x cubed minus x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. Now my first method involves breaking down the constant. Now, this equation is missing the x term, but it's not a redu reduced cubic because reduced cubic means that you do not have the term with x squared. And there's a process by which you can do it, and then you can use Cardano's formula, Ferrari's formula, Tartaglia's formula, whatever you want to call that, but there are lots of names for it. Uh, you know, there's been some uh, interesting discussions about it uh, and some arguments between those guys who... You know, somebody stole it from someone else, so on and so forth. But anyways, this is a cubic equation, and we're going to solve it uh, by breaking down the constant term. What is that supposed to mean? It means that I can uh, break down the negative 4 into negative 8 plus 4, because I can write this as x cubed minus 8 minus x squared plus 4 is equal to 0. The reason, uh, the motivation behind this method is taking advantage of difference of two cubes, as well as difference of two squares. So we're kind of using two important formulas here. Notice that I can take out a negative one here and write this as x squared minus four, and that becomes difference of two squares. And x cubed minus eight, as you know, is a difference of two cubes. So let's go ahead and factor it. a cubed minus b cubed can be factored into a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. And then this is difference of two squares, so I can write it as x plus 2 and x minus 2. And the whole thing is equal to 0. Now notice that x minus 2 is a common factor, so I can take it out. And once I take it out, uh, the rest is going to be x squared plus 2x plus 4 minus x plus 2 in parentheses. So that's going to be like minus x minus 2. Is we take we've taken out x minus 2 and if you simplify this you're going to get x minus 2 times x squared plus x plus 2 is equal to 0. Great so now uh, just like one of the other problems that we've done by factoring uh, this gave us a quadratic and a linear factor. So from here we can safely say that x is equal to 2 which is the real solution the other one is going to give us complex solutions. Let's go ahead and solve it by using the quadratic formula. That's going to give me negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is 8, divided by 2. And from here, x is going to become negative 1. So square root of 1 minus 8 is square root of negative 7. And that can be written as square root of 7i with the plus minus sign in front of it. And these are going to be the solutions to my equation. So we have three solutions. One of them is real. The other two are complex conjugates. Well, um, x equals 2 is also a complex number because it is a real number. Anyways, at the end of this, I'm going to show you the graph of this also uh, after do uh, we're done with the, uh, the both methods. Okay? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. My second method, first method involved breaking down the constant term, right? So let me rewrite my original problem. Now, the second method is going to involve breaking down the x squared. How do I break it down? I can write it as x cubed minus 2x squared plus x squared minus 4 equals 0. The good thing about writing it this way is we can factor it by grouping just like before, but it's slightly different. So I can now take out x squared times x minus 2. And this is, again, difference of two squares. So I can kind of write it as x plus 2, x minus 2. The same difference of two squares came up in both methods, but notice that the first one, the first one had a minus sign in front of it. That's why they are different. Okay, great. Now, x minus 2, again, is not a, is a common factor. That shouldn't be a surprise, right? And then we get x squared plus x plus 2 is equal to 0. And as before, if you solve this equation, you're going to get the exact same solutions. x equals 2 and x equals negative 1 plus minus square root of 7i divided by 2. So that 
gives us all the three solutions, two of them are being complex conjugates. Great, so we got the same answer, that shouldn't be a surprise, right? But notice that in both cases, we got x equals 2. So that should kind of give you an idea. I'm not really thinking about uh, presenting the third solution, but maybe as a quick extension here, I can briefly talk about it. I hope you don't mind. But since x uh, equals 2 became um, a solution, and we should always check that, you know, the rational root theorem tells us that if there's a rational solution, then it should divide the constant term because uh, this is monic. So we're looking for uh, factors of uh, 4, and there's only a limited number, like 1, 2, 4, and uh, they're opposites, right? So we can test these out, and if you test out 2, you're going to notice that 8 minus 4 minus 4 is equal to 0. So x equals 2 is uh, a candidate, right? It is a solution. Since x equals 2 is a solution, I can just go ahead and take it, you know, divide it by x minus 2, so on and so forth. So I can also approach the problem from this angle. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph now and see what that looks like. Okay, so now before you graph this, you can definitely, there's a, there's a few things that you can take a look at. For example, you can differentiate this function and then you can kind of look at the critical point, set it equal to zero, you know, so on and so forth, because these are going to give you uh, the you know, x coordinates of the critical points, which is where the maxima and minima occur. So obviously this uh, graph has a maxima at um, zero and uh, minima or minimum at two thirds. But the, the critical part about this graph is that it only has one x intercept, as you can see here, right? So the only x intercept is at, oh, that's too light. Let's use something else, maybe this, okay. The only x intercept occurs at x equals two, as you can see here, that is the only real solutions. So by graphing, you can also see, even though graphing is not always considered an accurate way to do it, but if you do it with Desmos, um, you can kind of put your um, you know, mouse or cursor over this and click on it, and that'll show you the exact location uh, where the x-intercept is. So that, that way you can verify, and of course, this verifies that x equals 2 is a solution too, because 2 comma 0 is on the graph. Well, hopefully, right? Okay, great. So uh, this basically tells you that um, graphically we can also approach this problem and, you know, find the real solution. Uh, okay, here's the thing. The graph doesn't give you the complex solutions. That is the complex piece, right? How do you get the complex solutions from the graph? Well, you don't, right? Uh, so you kind of have to work this out, uh, divide by, uh, you know, x minus 2 to find the other factor, which is um, quadratic. And the... Uh, the roots of the quadratic is going to give you uh, the complex solutions. Otherwise, you're only going to end up with this. But this graph should also give you some ideas whether the function is increasing and decreasing and so on and so forth. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.